Hey everyone, welcome to Bassman Studio. Today's lesson is going to be very different and very fun. What I'm going to do is show you how to paint a cat. So sit back and relax. Thanks for tuning in and enjoy this lesson from Bassman Studio. So here's our reference, a very nice picture of a gray cat with amber eyes. And I've already started the drawing. Keep, I kept it very simple as usual using a burnt sienna. And now I'm just putting in the background very simply. Remember you want to keep it simple. Think of big shapes, just go all around. A good thing about starting with the background is it just pulls your subject forward a little bit. So it's good to start from back to forward. And I'm, you know, I thinned out my paint as you could see, so it's not very thick. So I could move it around a little bit just in case. And yeah, you just want to go all around your subject, in this case, a cat. So just go all around. until you cover as much as you can. Very thin. And don't worry if it's not perfect, you could always fix it later. Some people are a little bit too careful. This is not like a time to be too careful. Careful, yes, but not over careful. And just adding a little bit more dark in the back. And you can see it's being pulled forward a little bit. And now I'm going to mix some yellow with the gray. And you can see how thin the paint is on my palette. So you don't want to use too much paint at this point. And this is for the uh, floor of the painting. And now I'm just going to paint the bottom part of the painting. So you're just going, I'm just going all around and I haven't painted the cat yet. I'm avoiding the cat for now until I got everything painted around it. So you can see it's being pulled forward a little bit and that's what we want. You want the painting to work in the beginning. You don't want to wait till later for it to work. You want it to start working from the very beginning, from the drawing stage. And now this is the, uh, I'm mixing the paint for the cat, which is a grayish color. So I'm mixing white and black and just a little bit of yellow since white and black are not colors in the spectrum. So always add like a little bit of color with your white and black. And you can see, I'm just going to paint the light parts of the cat, as you can see. And I'm just going to go again, all around, anywhere where I see light. And you just want to keep going. All around the cat's head, the body. And the background. And the pause. So anywhere you see light, basically. Again, it's not, don't get too careful. Just uh, be expressive, enjoy yourself. No need to pause. Yes, the pun was intended. <laughs> and Yeah, and you see how thin I'm painting, right? There's no no really thick paint yet, but not too thin either. And now I'm using chrome yellow, which is a beautiful lead-based yellow. So it's very bright and very powerful, and I'm toning it down actually with a little white. And this is for the cat's eyes. So you can see how bright this color is. It's, it's just absolutely beautiful to use. And now I'm just putting in the cat's eyes. And of course, that could change as well. 
But for now, this is what the color it's going to be. So it may look a little strange at this point. And now I'm adding the, uh, what we call the middle, the midtone, the shadows on the cat. And this is where it starts to kind of come a bit more alive. And like I said before, just go all around. And you can see the cat's head starts to have more of a three-dimensional quality to it. It starts to turn a little bit. It's exactly what we want. Remember, this, this method applies to anything that you paint. So, And again, just go all around. And again, the paint's not very thick. It's just pretty thin paint right now. And you want to treat it like a sketch at this point. Don't worry about any detail. Even if it's like amazing detail, like, like I'm really anxious to put detail in here, but I know that this is the stage where you avoid that, at least for now. And now I'm just putting in the darkest dark around the cat's ears, under its head. And you want to look at your reference. You want to see where the darkest darks are. And just put that in again, very simply. I just added a little black and a little blue. And you could blend a little bit. But I haven't switched brushes yet. This is the same brush I started with. So it's a big flat brush. And just go all around, just making sure. And you can see there's beautiful detail in that picture. So now I can start with the, the eyes, which I was really anxious to do. And I'm using a slightly smaller brush just to go around. It's a very sharp, flat brush. And I'm just going around the eyes just to give them more of a three-dimensional feel. And I have to say, I was very anxious to paint the eyes. I think they're just beautiful to paint. And you can see like with this close up that the paint is still wet. So this is a, what we call a wet on wet technique. And yeah, part of the eye. But I avoided doing this detail so till this part, even though I was anxious to paint it. It's just very beautiful to paint. And even the mouth part, just a little bit. So here's where we can get a little closer, put a little bit more detail. And with a really small brush, I start fixing up the nose slightly. and parts of the mouth. This is where you could start zeroing in on smaller detail. And anywhere you see that you are missing any detail that you should put in, put them in. And you could correct things too, like I'm correcting the drawing right now. It's almost like you're redrawing uh, what you've drawn before. You know, it sounds kind of strange, but you can still fix your drawing at this stage. And now I'm using a, a sable brush. It's a very soft brush just for blending. And I recommend it to blend. Very, It's very beautiful. It could be a little expensive, but it's worth it. They're very beautiful brushes to use for blending. And I never overdo the blending. I, I blend a little bit and then I stop. So you don't want to overdo the blending either. And I'm just making this so it looks like fur. So it looks soft. 
And the paint is still wet, so you can see I could even move the paint around at this stage. It's not dry. Which is beautiful. It's very it's a very direct way of painting. So I'm just going around and I'm back to the small brush and now I'm adding just sharpening up the edges, such as the ears. And this is where you can sharpen things, make them look a little bit more solid. And just going around. And now the highlight of the eye, which is one of my favorite parts to paint. And it's literally just a blob of white and a little bit of yellow. Just a touch. It's all you need to give the, the eyes like a wetness, a wet look to them. But you can see it's already making the eyes kind of three-dimensional. And don't fuss around too much with the highlights. And now I could add the whiskers. I've added a few already. But this again, this is where you use a small brush and you just continue with the drawing. You know, look around and see, have I missed anything? Is there anything I should put in there? Where should I blend, etc. Ask yourself questions. And I'm still blending, as you can see, because the paint is still wet. And you can still redraw. That's the beauty of painting wet on wet, is that you're still moving the paint around. And I'm back using the sable brush, and now I'm just softening up parts of the shadows and blending a little bit, even on the paws. Just adding a little bit more paint and just fixing the drawing a little bit. And one of the last things is just to go around the background and just clean up a little bit. Clean up any areas that you think need cleaning up before you call it a day. And just go around. Any area that is missing paint, just, you know, put it in there. Blend a little bit. Because everything has to work. The background, the figure, everything. Don't just rely on one thing. Everything has to, everything in a painting works in harmony. And now I'm working on the shadow underneath the eyes. So very carefully I'm putting in shadows underneath the eyes, just to give the eyes a bit more of a transparent, wet look to them. So very carefully, almost small touches of paint, barely anything, but they make such a difference. Sometimes these little touches make all the difference. So going from one eye to the other, and to steady my hand when I'm painting this, I'm using what we call a mall stick. And a mall stick is just a device, um, could be made of wood or it could be made of metal that's just used to steady your hand when you're painting. So you could buy it anywhere and it just helps to steady your hand. So I'm almost done painting the shadow underneath the eyes. And I'm just blending a little bit, just so it looks soft and shadowy. So this is where you want to be a little bit careful. And now just going around anywhere I might have missed, just adding some shadows that I might have missed before. Blending a little bit. Take your time with it. Look at it. Make sure everything is fine. 
And at this point, you could still go around as I'm doing and just moving things, blending, adding a few shadows with what I'm doing. And there we have it, our finished cat painting. It's perfect. Well, I hope you enjoyed that lesson from Bassman Studio. Stay tuned for new videos, which are coming very soon. For those who have subscribed, thank you very much. And for those who haven't, please subscribe to my channel. Um, and if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section. Any art lessons that you'd like me to cover that I haven't covered yet, any suggestions, please let me know as well. And um, that's it for today. So remember, don't let fear stop you from creating. Create as much as you can, be expressive, and I'll see you next time on Bassman Studio. Bye everyone.